Welcome to Cabarrus This Week. I'm Kasha Thompson. And I'm Jared Glass. And we're at the mills at Rocky River, one of the fastest growing neighborhoods in Cabarrus County. Every four years, Cabarrus County reviews property values based on market and economic conditions. This process ensures consistency among neighboring properties. The 2020 revaluation is currently underway. Due to activity and changes in the real estate market over the past four years, some properties have increased in value, some have decreased, and some are virtually the same. Soon, property owners in Cabarrus County will receive revaluation notices. We talked to tax administrator David Thrift and his team about how the county arrives at the value of a property. The revaluation project is almost a two-year project. We spend most of our time is analyzing the real estate market. A lot of work goes into development of that schedule of values, that manual that we use. We've got a very experienced staff, a total of, of six residential appraisers. We have two dedicated commercial appraisers. There's always some question as to how we arrive at a value of a house, and there's actually four individual steps we can use to identify that. Step one is to define the property. We go out to the property. We look at the information uh, we have on record and update that record, maybe uh, remeasure the house. So we're going to look at type siding, uh, we're going to look at uh, bedroom and bath count, floor coverings, those sort of things in order to determine the kind of unique parts of your particular property. Step two, we analyze property sales. Uh, throughout the county. Yeah, so we use those sales to determine market effect of different aspects of property on overall value. And we put all those in what's called the schedule of values. This is a, a document that you can view that has all the um, different adjustments that we have for our revaluation. Step three, we're going to look at neighborhoods and do some comparisons of properties within that area. At the neighborhood level, we can look at that individual market and then for each property, we look at the characteristics that affect that market and that, that value. So step four is the notice and appeals process. And this is where we actually mail you out the notice form uh, that will identify the property and let you know what we've determined as the fair market value and what our opinion is. And if there's concerns or if there's corrections or if there's something we've missed within this year and a half project. It's an opportunity for us to get that feedback from the taxpayer, establish that connection, and, and make sure that we have a, a clear understanding of what the market value for the property is. Thanks, David. Residents interested in learning more about Cabarrus's revaluation process are encouraged to sign up for Government 101, the 2020 reval. Government 101 includes interactive presentations and panels, demonstrations that break down the complexities of the revaluation process. The free workshop takes place Friday, March 6, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Cabarrus County Government Center, 65 Church Street South in Concord. Class size is limited and registration is required by March 4th. To learn more or to register, email outreach at cabarruscounty.us or call 704-920-2336. Registration is now open for the 2020 Cabarrus County Senior Games. One of our favorite things Absolutely each year. Absolutely, a big, a big deal in this county. Earn bragging rights in track, archery, tennis, basketball, cornhole, bocce ball, pickleball, and a variety of other events. Not into sports? Celebrate your creative spirit through the Silver Arts Competition, which includes performing arts, visual arts, literary and heritage arts, and cheerleading, of course, the Sparks. Yes. The world-renowned Sparks. <laughs> You can save $5 off the price if you register by March 11th. The final registration deadline is March 20th. Visitors to Franklis Park will notice some areas closed to accommodate work on the WUNC Tower. Closures include the softball and soccer complexes and part of the perimeter walking trail. And those are in effect to keep the areas safe. The closures are expected to last four to six weeks. We appreciate your understanding and will keep you posted throughout the process. For information on all the programs and services offered through Cabarrus County Active Living and Parks, call 704-920-3484 or follow at Cabco ALP on Facebook and Instagram. Now we head to what's going on around the libraries. We opened the show talking about taxes. Now it's time to talk about the only other certainty in life, which happens to be death. True story. Carol Hovey with the Atrium Health is here to talk about the importance of creating an advanced directive. What we have here is a program to help you learn about an advanced directive, which is 
giving your directions in advance to your loved ones about your medical care in case of a medical crisis where you could not communicate yourself. It is a legal document, so there is a little bit of legalese. It's also um, an emotional topic for people because it, during a medical crisis, there is a vast number of questions, decisions to be made about your medical care, and having this document will help your family through that complex and emotional maze of decisions that have to be made. If you choose to complete the forms, we have experts here to answer all of your questions and to make sure you know what you are signing. Atrium Health is doing this because we want a community that's educated about the importance and the need for it because it is truly a gift to your loved ones. We hope that you will come to one of these workshops. We have them monthly. We are here for two hours. You can drop in at any time. You will learn about the document. We'll answer any questions. We'll encourage you to talk with your loved ones about what you want and then you can complete the document if you want to and it's all free. Thanks, Carol. Carol and I sat together and went over my own form. It was an incredibly freeing experience and I'm so glad I did it. Thank you, Carol. Atrium Health regularly hosts drop-in advanced directive workshops that explain how to review and complete healthcare power of attorney and living will forms. They also offer free notarization of advanced directive forms and guidance on what to do once they are complete. The next Advanced Directive Workshop is February 15th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Kannapolis Branch. Check out the library's Facebook page often for new dates and locations. Now we go around the county starting at the Cabarrus Arena, which returns one of your favorite events. I know you Ish. are an alpaca lover. I insert think alpacas don't love me. <laughs> yeah, insert outtake. Okay. <laughs> Breeders from across the country will exhibit more than 500 top quality alpacas. The event features three rings of show competition, an alpa alpaca photo contest, and an alpaca fleece spin-off competition. Easy for me to say. There are also a number of educational classes and fun demonstrations. Believe it or not, you can even purchase an alpaca that day. True story. Crazy. Walk away. Or maybe just score some alpaca products. You can alpaca them in the back of the car. Yeah. <laughs> the show takes place February 15th and 16th at the Cabarrus Arena and Events Center. Admission and parking are free and you can learn more at cabarrusarena.com. We're now going to the county's email inbox and answering a question submitted by a website visitor, Mary P. Mary writes, please show me the sample ballot for the primary race for the Cabarrus County election on March 3rd, 2020. Mary, to find information on the March 3rd primary, including sample ballots, visit cabarruscounty.us slash elections, scroll down and click on the sample ballots card. To find your personal ballot, enter your first and last name. Now you can avoid the long lines on primary election day, March 3rd. Vote at one stop early voting. That's right. The only one stop early voting location for primary is the Board of Elections office at 369 Church Street North. The days and hours for one stop early voting are February 13th and 14th, February 17th through 21st, and February 24th through 28th, 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. The last opportunity for early voting is on Saturday, February 29th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So get out there and vote. Mm -hmm. For questions about the election process, visit the Board of Elections office in the Old Creamery Complex or call 704-920-2860. And of course, you can always visit their website, cabarruscounty.us slash elections or the North Carolina State Board of Elections website, www.ncsbe.gov. Now it's time to share jobs the county is currently looking to fill. All right. Current openings include facility services crew chief, long-term care income maintenance worker, grounds maintenance worker, and senior electrical technician. You can apply on cabarruscounty.us slash jobs. Call 704-920-2200 or stop by Human Resources on the second floor of the Government Center, 65 Church Street South in Concord. Well, that's our show. Thanks, Jarrett, for being here. Of Usually course. you're behind the camera, but we're always That's glad right. to see we're you here. That's right. We're braving the weather. It's about to 
pour down on us. So That's okay. we gotta wrap it up. I'll take the rain. <laughs> Next week, we'll take you to the annual Hearts and Heroes event that unites emergency responders with the cardiac survivors. One of our greatest events. Beautiful. Yep. Stay tuned for information on this and other topics through our newsletter, cabarrascounty.us on the search bar, type newsletter, or follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Cabarrus County. And you can always catch all of our other programming streaming live in HD at cabarruscounty.us slash Cabco TV, or you can download the Screenweave app for our Roku and Apple TV. Thank you to our tax administration office and Atrium Health for your help with today's program. For those of you at home, thanks for watching and take care. We'll see you next week.